This is a brief introduction of Flextable and this is the first video in this series. So we'll start by setting our environment. We'll be using some libraries and the libraries are going to be Flextable, dplyr and I'm using ggplot2 library just to use the mpg dataset from there. We're not plotting anything so I'm using the mpg dataset and Flextable would print this. We can change the names of the header by changing the names of the data frame. So with that we can print it again and you can see that the header values have changed. So we can do a different technique to do that. We can just for example I'm just changing the model to become car model which you can see on the screen. That's another way of handling it. So in the next one, I'm going to create a small data frame. So using dplyr, I'm creating a small data frame, which is easier to display on the screen for me. So there we go. We have a df small, and we'll be using this again and again in our next. So I'm using auto fit. You won't see much effect of that in, in the, in, on the screen because of the column names, etc. But you can make it out of fit or you can also make use of different column widths which you can define one after another so you can say all my widths are going to be column widths are going to be one or you can see that my column widths are going to be different so you can define like a vector which will have different widths so number of columns should be the same as uh, you know the number of widths obviously so that will give you the same effect also you can control it in a very precise manner controlling the column width is very useful when you're using it in r markdown so now let's start using some other text effects for example the bold i'm going to bold the complete table so i'm saying part equals all and there's other options also part equals body or part equals header we'll see it one by one so in this time i'm saying part equals body you would see that only the body is going to get bold now let's just bold the header so using the part equals header we would only get the header to become bold so obviously we can combine multiple attributes for example we can use italics as well as bold so we can control it one after another so we can make the header as bold header as italics as well you can obviously control it by rows and columns so remember rows are represented as i and column as j so i'm saying the second row should become bold in this example now I'm saying J equals two, which is the second column. So you can see in a vertical direction, the second column has become bold. So you can obviously use more controls. So I'm saying first, second, and the fifth column to become bold. You can also refer to the columns by the names or their header names, whatever it appears on the on the header for example i'm saying j equals ear so the ear column has become bold you can also define a criteria which is very useful i'm saying i equals tilde sign model equals a4 so wherever the model is a4 it'll turn into bold so the criteria could be multiple criteria as well for example cylinders equals six and model equals A4. Notice the use of tilde symbol in front of the cylinders. Now let's change the text or the font color, saying color equals red, part equals header. So the header has become red. We can make some criteria, for example, highway miles per gallon equals 27 change it to red color and you can see the effect of that. Now 
Now let's change the background color saying BG equals yellow, part equals header. You can again control it by giving different parts, part equals all or part equals body. So in this example, I'm saying part equals body. So the body will become yellow. So you can add multiple headers and footers. In this example, I'm saying add underscore header underscore lines and add underscore footer underscore lines. There's one row which has been added at the top, which is the header, and there's one at the bottom, which is the footer. And you can see the text in there as well. You can repeat the commands again and again by different row numbers and you will get multiple headers. So I'm saying first header, second header and third header. And the same thing can be done for footers as well. So I'm saying the first header should be aligned to the left, the second one should be aligned to the center and the third one should be aligned to the right. And you can refer to them by i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3. So far you have only seen that I've created a header which spanned the whole of the the table but we can create headers for individual columns also so i need to know how many columns are in there we have 10 columns so i'm saying add header row and value 1 2 3 4 5 6 10 so you can see individual values being shown at the top now let's create a final table and use all the techniques which you have learned so far so i'm giving a header row at the top and defining the column widths for that and I'm saying the header should be aligned to the left then I'm changing the background color for the header and changing the background color for the second header and for the third header so adding some more details in there changing the alignments for different columns and you can see this is the output we have the first header which is blue the second header part of the header has been changed part of the technical details header has been changed and the third header is pink color and then there's a footer at the bottom also so i hope you like this information watch the second part of this also which will describe more advanced topics thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.